I stopped, remember? What plan? No, I stopped the uh I stopped and asked, remember? I said what was what's the plan? plan? I stopped and said, what's the plan, remember? Because he told me. He told me he had a different plan. It was to swoop around. That's why I asked everyone. And no one agreed, so I said, all right, I'm going straight then. It's all right. It is all right. Don't put bubble at the giant freaking hole that's it on top of it. If it wasn't already broken, the branch would have gone right over the top. But since it was broken. <laughs> Should I help? Yeah. <laughs> are, we getting, are we getting weaker? Is this going to be going on? Take the brakes off. Oh, he's still in that one, though. It's because it's so hard ground now. What you got? Don't move it yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got your chance. Yeah. We're, we're gonna, people are lying down in front of the bus. They're saying, you won't move this bus. Now is the time no, for the protest sign. Right. I'm getting off. Lay down in front. Here it comes. Lie down in front. Thank you, sir.
Okay, who's ready to start the restoration? <laughs> I thought you were going to jump on your bad motor scooter and ride there for a minute. You want to go up top? I'm Sunshine Kesey. And uh, what's the, what do you think about the bus being up out of the swamp today? I think it's a wonderful thing. I think that my dad would love to brought the bus out of the swamp. He loved to make a good social gathering and to uh, get the cameras rolling, of course. It's one of his favorite events was to make a scene. And um, I think he's right here with us. You know, I think he was, he made those wheels roll, <laughs> you know, because they could have just stayed right in place. The bus could have been stubborn, but the sun came out, and today's a beautiful day. Yeah, that's what I think. I think the bus wanted to roll again, come out to play, get out of the swamp, and uh, I think my dad would be thrilled to see, you know, a new surge of energy behind, you know, an old fun thing, you know. What, uh, You're in charge. You I'm ditching it. you. Uh-oh. What are you talking about? <laughs> I gotta go pick up Caleb. Oh, alrighty. <laughs> Cheerio. You're now in charge. At ease. So, uh, what do you, what do you, what do you, to you, what do you think uh, about the bus now? Do you think, I mean, uh, now that it's out, what's mm -hmm. happening with it? Well, I think that uh, the story behind it can be told, you know, more graphically, obviously, with it, with it showing itself again and um, I think that the story being an inspiration for other people to go ahead and try it on their own and not necessarily leave it in the past but to go ahead and make an event make a set of wheels and a set of ideals that take you out into the world and inspire fun and imagination and um, you know I think that's what my dad was trying to do is just inspire other people to do the same thing and not just you know worship something you know, he wanted other people to spread out, spread the idea, you know, and go ahead and take the craziness on the road. So the bus is going to help us to get the story out. I think so. I think it needs to be reinfecting the world, you know. 
And um, the, old, the old idea still is powerful and it should be continued to spread to the new generations. And I think that people are receptive to fun. You know, as always. Yeah, well, do you have memories of riding on the bus or when the bus is rolling? Or... Um, not particularly, except when we were pulling it with a tractor. <laughs> and it stay, it was out in our baseball field for a long time, and so we uh, we had a lot of good times on the bus. It was, but it was more stationary in my my era. Sorry. And so when, uh, when did your dad decide to move it down to a small thinking about that? Um, you know, I couldn't say. Uh -huh. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, it's been 20 years, and he, um, I think he really, it was at a time when uh, he decided he was going to start making a, a new bus, because they've decided they really couldn't feasibly get this thing running again with our budget, and, um, and so he put it to bed, you know, put it in a nice cozy place to rest, and, um, and I think it was sad to get you know to let go of that but I think he also was excited to start a new project and not always be working with stuff that's fallen apart from the past but get something a little newer and um, so, yeah exactly and so he had a whole nother you know experience of getting new people to help paint a bus and new you know it was just to him it wasn't necessarily the bus you know it was also the action of everyone getting together to make something happen and so um, you know, that's why I think it's to inspire others to do the same thing and not just, you know, idolize one thing of the past. It's to go ahead and do it yourself, you know? Anybody can. Yeah. So when you talk about kind of that ideal and inspiring other people, so what is that sort of ideal or philosophy that kind of comes along with the bus and rolling and freedom? Yeah, well, the, uh, I think the philosophy behind the bus is to live in the moment, you know, and call the dance. You lead the dance and um, and have a group mind and be able to work with that kind of consciousness and have fun. No control freaks, you know, it's all about leaving it loose and fun and um, seeing where it goes. I mean, he used to play with the radio a lot and see what you know, just randomness and see what the world shows you. And it's usually, you know, you start to make things pretty cosmic when you open yourself up like that. And um, so it's just about making your day magic. And I think that's, you know, definitely something that he drummed into anybody who would listen. <laughs> and I appreciate that very much. He, he said it a million different ways and um, it always came back to the same message, you know. Go ahead and make your day magic and make it fun. Use your imagination and um, don't, you know, don't underestimate the power of your imagination. Beautiful. That's Thanks. great. Thank you very much. You bet. All right. No, no. I, I was a freshman in college and I stumbled on the opportunity. Uh, I was in uh, going to school in Norman, Oklahoma. And I knew about Woodstock and the, and the alternative papers for months, but I knew the way was west. And uh, it's 135 miles to Dallas, and it was uh, the Texas Pop Festival the week after Woodstock, and I liked the build a whole lot. So I went down there. Uh, Janis Joplin was there. Led Zeppelin opened for her, that's how it was. And, and uh, second night, they had a free stage out at the lake, and uh, uh, Hog Farm was running it and they were cutting up vegetables and handing out cantaloupe and uh, had a good light show, great cartoons, uh, wavy gravy got dosed and he was laying on the floor and they said anybody, that was the night he got his name, and they said anybody that's got any pot that they want to trade for some uh, LSD go to the bus behind the stage and I just happened to have some pot. <laughs> so uh, being, you know, being open-minded, uh, this this was parked there and it uh, I had a funky couch in the side door and a couple of hippies sitting there uh, with a low table and a wicker basket with a bunch of nits and uh, a cigar too with a bunch of beads and some orange sunshine barrels. <laughs> so uh, I, my family, we used to paint polka dots on Packards back in the 50s. So I was in the concept already, you know, and uh, I, I'd already read uh, Cuckoo's Nest and I'm a bookworm. And uh, I didn't know what it was, but I, you know, I liked it. And uh, stayed up all night, went out and played na naked sock uh, water polo in the lake until Wavy came by and said, everybody out of the pool. 
and uh, uh, I was taking, I was already taking the idea of traveling. I had already uh, been on a bus. Uh, next year, I rode a bus down to see Jimi Hendrix to 600,000 people uh, at the Atlanta Pop Festival. I went, I went to the uh, first Rainbow Gathering, but I didn't get there. I got arrested, and and then I uh, I rode a bus through the Colorado Rockies after that. And I knew someday I was going to get a bus of my own, you know, and uh, I did. And uh, <laughs> I got a, a church church bus uh, for a couple hundred dollars, sold it at a flea market for 500. I rolled it on the way to delivering it, uh, gave them a hundred dollars off. They bought it anyway, uh, bought this 82 white. I called them with a phone card, uh, see if it was the color of the make up in Idaho. I was stone broke. It was a... a a white make marquee. I uh, sold uh, a bunch of stuff I had, hitchhiked over to Idaho, loaded it up, uh, bought it. I knew I was going to buy it when I seen it at the gate. They took $100 down. I came out to California, sold that church bus, uh, put up some flyers, went back, picked up some people in Jackson Hole, drove it through Yellowstone, and I'd set up flyers in Berkeley. We picked up riders and we came up to the 82 field trip here. Me and Norm Ruth and a number of people bought buses for the first time. And I took it down to the US Festival, and, uh, and then uh, I took it on Dead Tour. I, I'm a serious deadhead. I've gone a whole year without missing a show. I've, uh, I've done seven tours in a row. I've probably done a, Dead Tours in a dozen different buses. I own, I, I'm, a, I'm a space admiral. I'm beyond a captain. <laughs> I, I, I own a, a, a fleet of dead buses. And uh, uh, so, I, you, know, you know, it's the old duck. Uh, Show them a duck and they'll follow it. You know, I'm bonded with it. <laughs> so so next, what else you had to ask me? <laughs> that brings us up to about two minutes ago. Going back to the, the festival, the first time you were on this bus, you said, I'm sorry, you said that was in Dallas? Uh, Denton, Texas, Denton, at Texas. Lake Dallas, north of Dallas. Okay, north of Dallas. And uh, uh, it's pretty famous in some circles. They're talking about making a movie out of it, finally. <laughs> <laughs> the week after Woodstock, and supposedly it was the last place this bus ever got on, the last stop. Okay. And I got on at the last stop, and, I, and uh, I've been waiting for my transfer ever since. That introduction to the bus obviously kind of clicked something yeah. in your mind that was already thinking. Yeah, it. yeah, it was already there. Yeah. I. Uh, and what does it mean uh, seeing this bus today coming up out of the swamp to you? What, what made you want to come out and help pull it out? Uh, well, it, it's like Phoenix from the Ashes to me. And uh, uh, I was here two weeks ago working on the, uh, the uh, Father on trying to get it ready for the uh, Vegas show. And uh, I uh, had commitments and responsibilities and priorities. and. Uh, I'd lost my uh, license under uh, an altercation, and I got it cleared up and back, and went back to driving uh, a walnut harvest truck on Friday. And I'm sitting in my truck getting loaded, and I hear on my uh, local community, Kate Zephyr uh, Community Dead, Dead Hour uh, Pledge Drive, my friend DNA says that he heard on the internet that they're pulling out of the further, pulling the further out. So I finished my shift, parked the truck, told him I was leaving and I quit my job. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll tell you. Uh, but uh, I, it honestly is. Uh, I, uh, nothing lasts, but uh, that's an oxymoron. It's really uh, not nothing lasts because uh, it's, it's change that lasts. And even, even the void changes. So uh, it had to happen someday, and I'm just glad to be there. Story to enough people that have that same experience that you had in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I met uh, Laura Joplin uh, two n nights ago at a book review, and she talked about it, and I was like, ah. <laughs> exactly. but, uh, there, was, there was a little uh, activity there with the, uh, with the plexiglass dome as you were bringing it out today. Huh? What happened up there? I can't remember the whole tune. This, don't go under the apple tree with anyone else but me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the worst that happened was the dome, and we're in pretty good shape. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that uh, 
it was it's gonna be replaced and uh, and uh, you know I'm glad it didn't hurt the tree or tear anything loose. Well, you you seem to be about the only guy courageous enough to go up on top. You weren't afraid of falling in there or stepping uh, I I own several double deckers, and I've ridden across the desert with with my friend Mark over here. Uh, there's it's a, it's the as I hear tell, it's the uh, the Riviera of a bus is on the roof. Amen. <laughs> and that's I'm quoting someone there who who uh, gravity, you remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay, like you can call me Cotton, you can call me Floyd, you can call me Dead On, you can call me uh, uh, Randy Turley. Uh, up in the foothills above Chico, California, where, where it's not so clean and green. Huh? <laughs> I'm high and dry instead. <laughs> okay. I know. You all right with that It's there, that's for sure. Uh, coming underneath, additional micage, stereo mic. Uh, David Tipton. Dave, why did you come out here today? Because I care a lot about this family and group of people that have come together around this bus and some of the culture that it's helped stir up in this world, which has been around my whole life. And I care a lot about it. It's definitely a symbol of some form of free thinking and freedom that once was in this country where people cruised around and were able to be free and expose people to different ways of being, which in this world of seriousness in these times, it seems like everyone's got a lot of fear going on and a lot of people forget to have fun. And when I moved around here when I was younger, something that I learned from these prankster folks was to have some fun. And uh, even though things are the way they are, you can still have a light heart. Hi, and that's, what, uh, that's something that's important to me. And after that, being uh, turned on to buses and traveling the country in many buses, this has been the ultimate symbol of the bus that we've all been involved in and centered around and care about. And, and it's fun and special to be able to participate and to be cared for by this tribe of people. It's, it's fun. You've been out to um, the farm a lot and seen the bus down that swamp for years, haven't you? I've been out here quite a few times, but uh, not like a lot of people that are here, you know. I've, I've lived around here for 15 years. But you've always had this image of the bus down in the swamp. Yes, right? yeah. yes. So what does it feel like standing out here with it in the sunshine? It's pretty amazing to me. I, I have a, a picture over my desk in my office that, that Keezy the chief had over he had, there's three prints, he has one over his desk, and it's of it sitting out in the cow field, which I guess it was for 20 some years or something, and or about 20 years, and uh, I never saw that, but I have a picture of it, so I think of that, you know, and, and as our friend was saying, I don't think it really did another road trip after that 70, 72 run, I don't think it ran after 72, so, and through the years of knowing uh, about the Smithsonian wanting to to restore the bus and Ken choosing to park it in the swamp and build another bus is interesting to me because to me it's uh, a different symbol of that moment and this is a symbol of this moment which is further in moving it on and bringing back into people's consciousness and minds and just little things like a symbology of something like this I think can mean a lot to some people. Well, hopefully, that anyone that actually gets curious by it, other than making a smile, which is a lot, um, there's depth behind it, you know, which to me can go all the way back to an intellectual way of thinking where people actually are reading books and learning about some of the literature that actually turned these guys on and led them to getting this bus and riding around 
and uh, so there's definitely substance and 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 the hip culture that comes around this this bus and the people that are around it now and in the day and what led up to it goes back through I can trace some of the roots through human history and to me it's a symbol of the period but it's directly a part of the whole picture so yeah well, I said a lot, man. Oh, beautiful. Man. So, any thoughts about the bus coming out of the swamp? Uh, well, I, th I thought it'd make it, and it did, and here it is, right back out here again. Nothing lasts, just like the chief always said. Nothing, not even the bus in the swamp. <laughs> man. <laughs> you think we should have left it down there? Uh, I don't know. Not my call. You want to see it rolling again? Sure. Be neat. Thoughts on that? Yeah, it'd be great. Another bus, that's what we need, you know. <laughs> we got to restore it for the movie anyway. You know? yeah. We don't need it. The movie's got to have it. Might as well do the real one. Doesn't look too bad, you know. New bubble. A little bit of metal here. I see there's lots of fiberglass. I don't think that's factory. But they have fiberglass back then. Did they? Yeah, it needs a lot of work. You know, it was pretty bad back in 65, I guess. When you look at the old picture, you can see the rust. Every year, someone else, you know, one other guy, yeah, we're going to restore the bus. Yeah, it's been about, what, now 20 years now? Every year, someone says that ever since we put it back there in the swamp. This is the first year it's ever actually come out of the swamp, so, hmm. Progress. Yeah, progress has been made. So maybe something else will happen next, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> oh! Yeah, we actually made a music video back in, when was it, 88 or something. Flashpoint, the band out there, and the bus is out there. And one of the shots, I'm jumping up out of this. Out of the hole, but the hole was smaller. It's a little bigger now. Pointier. <laughs> you can cut that in, I'll give you the tape. Pretty good video. The chief, we're all wearing jumpsuits. Chief's got his on, everybody's got We got these two girls, these high school girls, you know, jumpsuits on. And if Swan was in that, he knows what about it. Yeah, a flashpoint. That's the ba band. That was the song, the party song. Flashpoint? The party song is what we did for the music video. You got a lot of airtime on MTV? No, no. <laughs> it was a local thing. <laughs> public access. Yeah, it did. Definitely on public access. And, you know. You going to this thing in Vegas? Oh, yeah, we're taking the bus, you know. You know. You got a lot of work to do on that in a week. Yeah. What else are we gonna do? I mean, it's out now. We gotta get it going. Another day, another dollar. We do it done. We put the bill, so we're you're footing the bill, so we might as well do it. Yeah, my buddies will be out here soon. They got those chainsaw carbide cutter things. You ever seen those? Sure. Take the side right Cut the off. top right off. Make sure you're convertible. Just drop a big block in there, and it's it's rolling. Good Tires are good. Yeah. Tires are good. <laughs> we'll have it in Vegas, no problem. We might not make it back, but <laughs> good place for it out there in the desert. It lasts forever out there. <laughs> Swamp. Mm. Didn't last so long. All this is fiberglass, isn't it? Oh. This is all fiberglass. That's how they did that. I think you got it. I was wondering how they did that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh-huh. So that's how you do it. I just need to get some fiberglass in a bubble. Yeah. I'm putting one of these bubbles in my bus. Yeah. Did the other bus have a bubble? No. This is the only one I know with a bubble. Well, my mom said there used to be some hog farmers who had one with an airplane cockpit on it. World War II started to slide it. Get up there. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs>
See, I'm thinking one of these bubbles you could put like a robot camera up here, zoops around, and intelligent light, you know, light show will pull up, you know, going down the road. Yeah. All right, man, we'll see you in Vegas. Okay, we'll be there. Thank you.